Hello, my soccer universe. The draw is in the books. And I gotta say, I while we do not have a group that really stands out as this is the, the most watched group, or you know, this the group of death, which, as you saw in my preview, uh, was not to be expected anyway. We do have a, quite a few interesting groups, and I think it's a pretty interesting uh, draw. Now, a uh, quick disclaimer, I do not have my program <laughs> ready yet, so this is just my gut feeling uh, on what I think these groups uh, mean and how it will pan out further. And I, you will get later this weekend. I'm not even sure if I will be able to give it to you on Saturday, uh, the overall result for uh, the groups, but I want to get it done by the end of the weekend because on Monday I want to go fully back into um club football in many ways so um that's where my head is at at the moment so yeah after a ridiculously drawn out ceremony as always but it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and now they haul up uh more and more unnecessary personnel i gotta say uh, just give me the start i mean uh i had it on at uh six local time I knew it's gonna take at least half an hour, so I knew I'm gonna pro pro program further, blah blah blah. It took a whole 45 minutes to get the half hour for, for the draw done, and even the draw, ridiculously draw, uh, drawn out. And JJ Okocha, yeah, showing his uh, skill with the with picking out the red ball in many many ways. Uh, interesting thing, I mean, of all the luminaries they got out to conduct the draw. I was thinking, who is the biggest player among these? Um, is it Cafu? Is it Lothar Mateus? Or is it Carly Lloyd? I leave this up for you. I my, I mean, I think all of them could make a valid point. I know it's hard to compare women's soccer and men's soccer. Um, as much as I love Cafu, I honestly think the best player out there is Lothar Mateus. It hurts a lot to say that. But I'm just saying, just saying, just saying. Start the discussion down there. In any case, I would say I'll present to you the groups. And unlike FIFA, I'm giving you it in the order of the pot. So the first team is pot one, pot two, pot three, pot four. I actually like this better because I it makes it easier for me to orient myself this way. And um, you see me already wearing Argentina, which I think is definitely one winner of the draw. And as I said, I will do an analysis where we will uh, definitely look at winners and losers of the draw. But for me, just gut feeling wise, Argentina and the Netherlands are the big winners. The Netherlands got a peach of a group. The only problem that I see is that Louis van Gaal made himself some enemies in Qatar. We get a stinker of an opening game. Sorry, Qatar. Sorry, Ecuador. Uh, I was at least hoping that we get Qatar Netherlands as the opener, so we have one big team. Uh, it's about as much of a stinker as we had uh, Russia against uh, Saudi Arabia, and we know that Ecuador is not particularly doing well at lower levels. So yeah, um, <laughs> it doesn't really start start off well. I have to say, even though, though uh, even how the entire draw went, we are not getting a really big opening round game. I would argue that Brazil Serbia, and we'll get to that, is probably the 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 game to watch out for uh, to start the competition with. It, 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 the, the competition will be a slow burn, to be honest, at the beginning. But yeah, going back to Group A, I mean, if I'm a Dutch fan and I am, I could not have wished for more. I get the weakest team from uh, Group A. Yes, it is the host, and yes, Levan Hall made us uh, some enemies, but this is a group you just gotta get through. And I'm even thinking, probably Qatar will be the second team getting out of this group, but I think Senegal has a very realistic chance, as to Ecuador. I mean, the other three are relatively even. This might actually uh, go um, against the, Net the Netherlands, but um, Netherlands going through that. Group B, most interesting group of them all. And not, not, not necessarily for sporting reasons, but I mean, just from a geopolitical uh, level. Uh, you have England, Iran, USA, and then the winner of the Euro playoff, which is Wales, Scotland, or Ukraine. 
I mean, whoever gets in there, I mean, of course, we would like to have go Wales and um, Scotland if I look at that group. But even if Ukraine goes through, I mean, there's a whole lot of things going, going on in Ukraine as, uh, as well that will make that a very, very interesting group. And of course, Ukraine will definitely, get, uh, due to political situations, get a lot of support. But just to having England, USA and USA, Iran, I mean, come on. England, USA is, I still remember this. This is what the... I lived in America when they met at the 2010 World Cup. This was the most talked about match there. And uh, it's a very similar situation there to, to this. We have a very talented US team. We have a highly talented England team. And we got a draw. So draw, so draw. England has still not beaten the USA at the World Cup. Might be time for that one. But we don't get this immediately. This will only be the second match. And, you know, Euro playoff winner... <laughs> If it is Wales or Scotland, yep, would be interesting. But I also said uh, Ukraine, USA, USA, Ukraine, a very interesting game as well. And yeah, I fear a little bit safety wise Iran against USA in Qatar. It's going to be interesting. Group C, I think Argentina definitely also very concerned with this group. I cannot say it more. I mean, Mexico. At this point in time, you want to play Mexico. Mexico is, yes, it's still a, a year away, but ahead of this tournament and through the qualifying cycle, Mexico has not been a great team. Poland, perennial underachievers at the World Cup. Is usually they uh, cock up the first two games and then the last game they win. Yeah, that's against Argentina. Saudi Arabia, I mean, what a relatively soft opponent. Yes, it is in Arabia. So uh, there is a slight home field advantage, maybe for Saudi Arabia, but given tensions between Qatar and Saudi Arabia, yeah, maybe not as much. So we saw. Again, Argentina should sail through this one. I think it's between Mexico and Poland. And actually, I would say Mexico had ahead of Poland. I don't give Saudi Arabia much of a chance. Group D, the holders. Um, looks easy. Have we said that before? France probably should break the curse. But this group is exactly, I mean, exactly the makeup where you can fail. And remember, in 98, France played in the group stage against Denmark. Advanced world champions. Last game. This time is not the last game again against Denmark, but in 2002, they also played against Denmark. And against uh, a pesky French-speaking African opponent. And uh, South Africa uh, and, and and the South American teams, African team, a South American team. So I mean, uh, the playoff here is we see Australia, Peru, UAE, probably probably Peru. Just saying, just saying, I could see Peru and Denmark making it out of this group if France think this group is easy. And given the curse, I would say France are the huge favorites here. But I think that group is tricky. I mean, the good. The good thing is that the first game is, prob is prob probably against the very... Uh, if it was Peru, it's not a foregone conclusion. It will be P P P Peru, but they're the favorite. If it, this was Peru, I mean, it's a very much a deja vu group because France, Peru, Denmark have ever been playing uh, last, at, last, uh, at the last World Cup. Same thing if it is Aust Australia, France, Australia, Denmark. We're also, also in a group. It's a very much a deja vu group. But if it is Peru... They are very offensively playing team, so this could play very well in the cards of France, but to be honest, it's also something that could hurt you. I just pulled it out there. Um, that might be, uh, look at Peru and Denmark to maybe do something. I, I guess France should win this group on a normal day. And they had already the little uh, Europe uh, flare-up, blah, 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 so maybe they will just get it about done. Still, that's a tricky group. And I'm sure that Tunisia in the last game will just hang on for points. But I think it's it might help France that the last game is against Tunisia when things might already be decided. I, I, I think the way that the group pans out for France is rel re relatively good. Group E. That was the group that it started out so well with Spain and Germany. But the problem is, I, you know, I jokingly said that Germany, I, I would love to see in a tough group. But I knew it would get a really, really tough group. Germany needed to, need to be in a group with Brazil or with Argentina. Spain and Germany, yes, it's not ideal. And we'll talk about pathway to the finals uh, at the end. But Spain and Germany, 
and the rest i mean japan costa rica new zealand i it's just who will will be first i don't see anyone making any trouble uh it's a little bit of a range group we remember it's not too long ago that spain beat germany six nil so uh hansi flick now in blah 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 there will be a revenge uh it's been pretty much to the day two years that spain beat germany six nil so uh that has to be said um i as much as i would like to see a japan do something i just cannot see not to be spain and germany this is a uh, more or less a dead robber group uh maybe what gets it a little bit in favor is that uh it's the second game between spain and germany group f uh is a very neat world cup group you know uh belgium canada morocco croatia nothing really exciting but um Yes, you would say Belgium, Croatia should go all through. I think that both Morocco and Canada could give one of these some trouble. They are those are fast, speedy teams, uh, especially when I look at an uh, Hakimi or uh, you know uh, Alfonso Davies and and, and and so on. I think here the two outsiders actually do have a chance. It's still Belgium and Bel it's very much Belgium and Croatia. Group G, the other deja vu group. When did we have the last time Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland? Yeah, at the last World, 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 World Cup. That, uh, a group that Brazil, uh, you know, a little bit stumbling, but overall went through easy. Um, Serbia, Switzerland. Yeah, we have Eagle Gate again. <laughs> Second game again. Uh, will the referee this time uh, see the penalty on Mitrovic? That's the big question. Revenge, 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 revenge. Because, um, yeah. This time, uh, the group is still turned around. Last, last time Brazil started against Switzerland. Now they start against Serbia. So uh, that, that might make it interesting. Cameron in there, uh, no chance. Not this Cameron team. It is for historic purposes. Always nice to see Brazil seemingly always uh, tends to play Cameron at some point. Uh, so those are two very uh, attractive nations. Also color-wise, this group is, will be very interesting because you have the yellow of Brazil, the green of Cameroon then uh, red and white, it's it's going to be Brazil and then the better one between Serbia and Switzerland, which I think uh, those two teams are very much level. I would give Switzerland again the edge because I think Swiss, uh, Switzerland is one of those teams that are really hard to uh, eliminate in many ways. And then we have Group H, uh, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, Korea, Republic, same little bit like Group F, maybe... E Two more clear favorites, Portugal and Euro Uruguay. I step ahead of the others. I think Korea could potentially do something with a Portuguese coach. So that will buy it. Be an interesting Ghana uh, cannon fodder. Unless they pull a miracle out of, out of the bag, I don't see Ghana. I mean, if this was the Ghana from um, 12 years ago, boy, this would be an interesting group. 12 years ago, I think this would be a really, really, really tough group. This way, Portugal, Uruguay, step above the others. I would give Korea a chance of getting out here. So this is not the groups by the by themselves, but we have to look at the larger picture, of course, which is always something I like to do. Uh, we know that Group A and Group B, those uh, uh, for the round of 16, uh, they will face each other. So, I mean, we're looking probably at the Netherlands, US, uh, and England against Qatar, something like that. Uh, group C and D, yeah, this really now depends on how France and Ar Ar Argentina will finish up. I think Argentina will win, win a group. France, not necessarily. I said it before, uh, and it's just, for once, I don't, and probably I'm helping France with this. Not uh, unnecessary, uh, not uh, necessarily not intended, but we might get a, re a rematch of the Argentina-France uh, round of 16 match. But if it goes by uh, form, um, Argentina Peru would be interesting. Argentina Denmark. Oh, this would be a tough matchup for Ar Argentina France on the other side. France against Mexico should be a foregone conclusion in many ways if it really was to happen this, this way. Then Group E and F are paired. So uh, this is interesting because I think both Group E uh, advancing teams will probably be favored of both F teams. I mean, I would say Spain, Croatia, yeah, there was something. 5 3 win. And Germany Belgium might well be the uh, matchup of that round. I think this would be super interesting. A group uh, G and H. Where is Brazil, Uruguay, Brazil, Portugal? Sit back and relax. It's going to be uh, uh, an interesting game. And then um, whoever wins the group H, I think it will be Portugal. So Brazil, U U Uruguay, Portugal against Serbia or, Swiss, uh, or Switzerland is also one where there is an upset potential there. 
because I really read really it. I actually, if the, the Serbian team can finish last in, in a group or make it make it to the semis, to me, anything is possible with that group. Super talented, super combustible. That's how I see them, and this is usually the case for them. So this is round of 16 matches, but now it really gets interesting for the quarterfinals. And again, I'm going now by strongest team in each group. So uh, to give it A and C. So Netherlands, Argentina in a potential quarterfinal. Interesting. Group B, France, England. Sounds tasty, doesn't it? Group E, let's say Spain wins this group. Okay, Georgia, Germany. <laughs> Whoever wins that one, it goes further. Um, would play against the Brazil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a potential who will win the World Cup. And then F and H, yeah, that is really, I mean, winning those two groups could be very much giving you um, a relatively easy semi-final spot. Just have that in mind. Belgium, Croatia, Portugal and Uruguay. If you play your cards right, if you win your groups, um, a semi-final is easily in there. So I, 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 of course, the second place team from Group E might also go into the semi-final. Just not the bene. So it might not be the worst thing if in Group E to finish second. Germany is the semi-final. You hear it here first. And then we have to go one further. Uh, so we had the quarterfinals. Um, and then it's again the cross. And now we have... Uh, the winner of Netherlands, Argentina, so group A and C, will play against the winner of E and G, so Spain, Brazil. That's the point where I guess the draw for the two of them uh, breaks a little bit down. Although Argentina against Brazil, I could see Netherlands against Spain. I mean, there's a whole lot of um, stuff in there. Netherlands against Brazil, always a great one. Argentina against Spain, uh, what more would you want? Messi against uh, his former colleagues. The other one, as I said, um, this is counting Germany Ger 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 for a moment, although I could see very much Germany going in there. Uh, there is um, England will play uh, whoever came out of the Belgium group or Germany. <laughs> so England, Germany uh, is uh, is one uh, a possible round than the uh, France. Portugal route is also one, so that will be the other one. So you see how everything pans out. It's kind of really, really interesting. As I said, for me at the moment, now I'm talking about through uh, finishing second in group E could be an advantageous thing for going on, especially what, uh, if you see what Brazil is doing. If you're the Netherlands and Argentina, you re really, really like your chances of making a semifinal because uh, it is, r yeah. I think the Netherlands more than Argentina. But you know, you face each other in the quarterfinal. So, yeah. let's see. Those are my first thoughts on the World Cup. I'm really... Um, now, it gets exciting and now we have to go through the entire summer and uh, club season and forget all about it. But, you know, we have some playoffs to complete the whole thing, which would make it interesting. As I said, I will try to get this weekend a first real analysis to quantify who are really the winners and losers. Uh, get you my first prediction uh, in there and then I uh, will take it from there and yeah this was probably the first proper real World Cup video because now we have names we have groups everything comes any case please let, let me know what you thought about the draw uh, which group do you like like, like best Who, which team do you, do you think uh, got off easy which team got a tough draw Let's see. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will definitely talk to you soon and more about it. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.